Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cabela's, Cuddyback, America's Best Bowstrings, Drake Non-Typical, Easton Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers, Hoyt, Hoyman Tree Saws, Lone Wolf Tree Stands, Nikon, Ozonics, Redneck Blinds, RTP Outdoors, Spot Hog Releases, Wasp Archery, Viking Solutions, and Realtree. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. It's the evening of October the 2nd, and I'm pretty excited to be here tonight. Um, the short story is that two nights ago, the landowner and my friend Dwayne hunted this farm in two different spots. Dwayne hunted the redneck blind, which is about 150 yards in front of me, and it overlooks a one acre clover field. I hunted a spot where I killed my biggest buck a few years ago, called it the G2 stand. Uh, it's probably 300 yards to my east. And the idea was that to, to get on this bachelor group, he would hunt the clover, I would hunt the oaks, and hopefully one of us would lay eyes on them. Dwayne ended up seeing the bachelor group, the big seven, the big nine, some of the three-year-olds. They were all congregated right where we're sitting right now. But what happened just, I mean, just a few weeks ago, uh, the landowner had somebody come in with a track hoe and clean up this old pond. And they actually sowed ryegrass to keep this uh, all this bank from eroding. And it just happens to be the biggest, prettiest, mature oak trees on this farm, all around this pond bank. And they're raining acorns. So, I don't know. I guess you just gotta hunt where the deer are. And it's hard to argue with the most recent information. And so two nights ago, they were all huddled up right under this stand. So I'm excited to be here. There's at least two bucks I would shoot for sure. So either one of them will do just fine. But hopefully everything will work out and tonight will be the night. So we'll hurry up and wait and see what happens. down to 30 minutes and I've got to be really quiet. Um, about 10 minutes ago I spotted two bucks and they're working along this ditch straight to my west and they're probably coming this way. The grass is so tall that I'm going to have trouble seeing them until they come out of it. So I guess we'll find out. Definitely running out of time. I apologize for the camera light, but how are you going to turn up a shot like that? That's that big nine point. That's the best deer that we have on camera. And I wasn't sure when I first saw him earlier, probably about 620, I wasn't sure for sure which deer that was. And I was basically out of camera light. And I turned around and started putting everything up that I could do without. 
and turned around and looked over my shoulder and there he came out of the grass. I put my binoculars on him and, and uh, realized who it was and I ranged him and he was 34 yards and I was able to get the camera back out of the bag, get it on the deer and, uh, and I waited patiently <laughs> for a couple of minutes to get a, a good clear shot but 656 so still got about I guess I shot him two minutes ago so I still had a couple of minutes of shooting light left but uh, I get to think tonight was uh, 659 so he came in at closing time but it worked <laughs> that's awesome and, I, and it looks like a really good hit too hit him right behind the shoulder and he went through this tall grass and kind of toward that um, redneck plot. So anyway, I'm going to uh, see if I can't uh, get me some help on the way and we'll go from there. <laughs> yes, love it. All right, it's about 7.45. My brother Zeb just got here. So it's been about, I guess it's been a, about 50 minutes or so since I shot the buck. And we actually was able to look back at the footage. Shot looks perfect, just like I thought it was. So we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> well, that's how far he went. <laughs> I'm kind of glad he didn't make it all the way, you know. Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> the best part is we can drive to here. Oh, man. Well, what a difference a year can make. <laughs> I came off of uh, probably the worst year I've had in 12 years. And it is October the 2nd today. And that right there is the best buck on this farm and it's kind of crazy how it all worked you know we were probably more aggressive than we normal normally are and uh, the thing is I think a lot of people us included we get kind of stuck in a rut and we hunt the same stands and we're just kind of spoiled especially us that hunt private land but this year we had a little different strategy my friend Dwayne the landowner and I have hunted together for a long time and we've kind of tried to stay out of each other's way so Maybe he hunts one farm, I hunt the other, or whatever, so we don't mess each other up. Well, this time, we actually hunted more like a team. And it took three days to really zero in on these deer, and uh, you can see how it played out. It was perfect. So, they came in about 6.20. They uh, finally got up to me right at closing time, and luckily I was able to, to make the shot. And, uh, man, that's a nice buck. That's a perfect way to get the year started. Sure am glad I'm not having a repeat of uh, 2017. But uh, fun night. Thank you for coming, Zeb. Filming the recovery. And thank you for watching Midwest Whitetail Southeast. All right, welcome to Midwest Whitetail Southeast here. We're here in Tennessee this afternoon. It's September 27th. Um, it's the first afternoon at all I've got to hunt all year we're sitting over a plot here that has a bunch of frigid forage clover in it and down here to my right about 75 80 yards is uh, one of the plots y'all seen me plant earlier in the year but the other day was checking cams and this one showed a uh, showed a deer that's really borderline uh, I really want to get a look at him on the hoof to determine so this is kind of a scout and hunt this afternoon Got a northeast wind, north wind, which is perfect for this spot. We should have a lot of action, I would think. Looks like there's deer in here about every afternoon, about 5, 30, 6 o'clock, about an hour before dark. Hoping to make something happen this afternoon. So, y'all stay tuned and see what happens.
That's the deer we come in here to scout. 100% positive he's only three now. Really, really good deer though. Hard to pass up. We'll go ahead and name him Chosen. Y'all stay tuned with me and Taylor for the rest of the year. Uh, we'll see what we can make happen here in the southeast. Off to a really good start right now. A lot of hope. So y'all stay tuned and see what happens. Good morning. Welcome back to Midwest Whitetail Southeast. Today is September 29th. This is officially my day two in the tree this year. Um, we're back up here, Big River Farm. Still having the uh, north wind, so I'm having to stay in this set here. Um, seen several does yesterday morning. It's five or six. So yesterday when I got down, I checked my camera here. And I don't have any pictures of one side or any of the other. Um, you know, up and coming bucks. I, mean, I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. I feel like maybe this is just, you know, maybe he leaves his farm. And uh, I usually start picking his pictures back up in late fall, but uh, maybe we'll get a doe this morning. Y'all stay with us, we'll see what happens. So far, it hadn't been a terrible set. Uh, basically, those same four doe from yesterday morning came through the exact same spot. And I had every intention of trying to shoot one, but the first one that came out was, by the time she got out where I could see, I ranged her and she was like 48 yards. By the time I got the camera on her good, she had turned and started walking away from me. And I mean, I could have took a shot, but what you have to understand is I'm hunting fairly close to these bug beds and all of these deer that we're seeing is going to those beds. I know I'm not seeing the bug that I'm in there hunting, but we did see one uh, young bug and then a little yearling. But I really want everybody to understand about these bug beds. I mean, <laughs> Once you find these bug beds, your first time in is always going to be your best opportunity to kill that deer. So these are not spots that you're going to be able to go to, you know, every time the wind's right or every time, you know, you get a chance to go hunting. These, when you start getting that close to where a buck is bedding and you know for sure he's bedding there, I mean, you may only have one chance to get it done. And the only way I'm going to go in with that chance as if the conditions are perfect. So I'm gonna hang out a little bit longer this morning, see if it's any later movement it's about. It's almost eight o'clock right now, so let's uh, hang out for a little while longer and see what 